Hello, everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about some ES6 topics you might not have had too much exposure to yet. They are ES6 maps, sets, and symbols. So first up, what are maps? Now, I'm not talking about the dot map method on arrays. I'm talking about something very different. Um, if you're familiar with Ruby, uh, from, if you're familiar with hashes from Ruby or um, dictionaries from Python, they're very similar. There are special objects that hold a collection of data in key value pairs. For example, if I had a uh, phone book and I wanted to keep that phone book in an object and every key was going to be a name and every value was going to be a number, this would be better suited for a map instead of like a basic object. Um, for maps, any key can, any data type can be a key. So I can use strings, symbols, data types like undefined, not a number, and then, and uh, no. So to create a map, I use the new operator, the word map, and I invoke it with a set of parentheses. I can actually insert a two-dimensional array into that, and it will become the key value pair for that map. So one of the reasons why maps are better than basic objects for a collection of data is that they have special uh, prototypical methods that are good for modifying this collection of data. So we have the set method, which will set a key value pair, the get method, which will retrieve a value with an associated key, the has method, which will verify the existence of a key. There's also the size method, which will um, give you the number of key value pairs within the map, the delete method that will delete a key value pair, and the clear method that will delete all key value pairs. So if I wanted to implement these same map protocol methods in a basic object, it would work well for some, but not for others. So for set and get, it would work pretty fine, setting a key value pair and getting a value with a given key. But for has, to verify the existence of key, you have to go out and around about method. I would have to see if that key uh, value is equal to the data type undefined. Um, if I want to implement the size method, I would have to use something like objects that keys, insert the object, which makes it into an array, and get the length of that array. Um, if I wanted to do delete, there's no prototypical method to delete uh, key value pairs on objects. I would have to use the for and delete operator. And if I wanted to clear all keys, I would have to cycle through all keys, maybe using a loop and then deleting each key value pair one by one. You might be thinking, if I wanted to delete all key value pairs on an object, couldn't I just make a new blank object and have my variable associated with that one? Yes, that's true, but if you're associating that, if you're referencing that object in other parts of your application, you'll have to change those references too. Being able to remove all key value pairs on that object gives you more options. So indicators that you should use maps instead of basic objects for a collection of data. Um, if you have a collection of data where all the keys are going to be the same data type and all the values are going to be the same data type and you don't know the key names until runtime, you're probably better off using a map instead of a basic object. If you already know what the key names are going to be in advance and, they, and the values may be different data types, you're better off using a basic, uh, you're better off using a basic object. If you, so for example, if in our React application, if, you, if you're using a, a basic object to hold state and you already know the key names in, in advance, better off using a, a basic object in that case. Um, and anytime you want to use keys that aren't um, symbols or strings, you're, you would need a map instead of an object. So what are sets? Sets are very similar to arrays, except that every value within a set is unique. If you ever try to enter a value into a set that already exists, it's going to be ignored and no error message will be thrown. To create a set, you use a new operator, the word set, and you invoke it with a set of parentheses. You can insert uh, an optional array in there, and it will become the values for the set. But like I said before, if, they, if the array that you're inserting already has duplicates, those duplicates will be ignored, and there will only be one instance of each value. So it's a quick and easy way to make a, an array unique if you're trying to do like a code wars problem or, somewhere else, or using it for something else in your application. So um, similar to map, they have different prototypical methods. There's add method to add a value, has method to see if a value exists on the set, the size method to count the, va the number of values in the set, the delete and the clear key, which will delete one or clear all values in the set. If I wanted to implement these for arrays, 
it would work well for some, but there's like one in particular that it won't work too well for. So the add method, you can just use push, pop, shift, run, shift. The has, you can use the includes. To count the number of values, you can use its length. Now, to delete a specific value, not just one at the beginning or the end of your array, you would have to find that particular value with something like index of, and then splice out that value or use another method to remove it from the array. If you wanted to clear all values from the array, you could just use the splice method as well. So you might be thinking, yes, it's nice that sets have these five methods that are good for modifying a data collection, but don't arrays have over 20 methods that are good for modifying a data collection? That's true, but in many instances of our web application, all we're doing is adding or removing or verifying the existence of a value in a set. So you don't need them all the time. And there's some performance um, benefits by using sets when you don't actually need an array. So, and especially if you want the, the set of values to be unique, it's easier done with a set versus an, ar versus an array. Because every time you're entering a value in an array, you, you would have to verify if it is in there before you would enter it in. So if you don't need prototypical methods like filter, map, reduce, you should seriously think about uh, using a set instead. And if you find out that you actually did need an array, you can easily convert sets and maps into arrays. You can use the array.from method to, the new ESCS array.from method to um, make any map set uh, string even into an array. Um, a map will become a multi-dimensional array, and a set would become a normal array. You could also use a spread operator with maps and sets as well, and it'll do the same thing. To loop through maps and sets, they both have a prototypical um, for each method that will iterate through the key value pairs for map and the values for a set. There is also the new ASX for of loops, which will work on any iterable object. Iterable objects are maps, sets, um, arrays, and strings, strings by the, the string global object. Um, they will also iterate through key value pairs for maps and values for sets. So what are symbols? Symbols are the new primitive data type that was introduced with ES6. To create a symbol, you use the word symbol and you invoke it with a set of parentheses. You do not use a new operator. It will cause an error. You can also um, insert an optional string into that symbol to be associated with that symbol. Now, every time you create a symbol, it's unique. So if you create two symbols in the same fashion and don't insert an op optional string, they will not be equal to each other. If you create two symbols and insert the exact same optional string, they will also not be equal to each other. Every instance of a symbol is unique, except when you don't want them to be. When you want it, you can actually create symbols that are, that are not unique. You can create them using the symbol that for the symbol that for method, and it will create a symbol that is added to a global symbol registry. So if you create two um, symbols using symbol dot for, they will be equal to each other, and if you insert the exact same optional string, they will also be equal to each other. So you might be thinking of, yes, there are unique symbols and there are symbols that aren't unique. How do I tell the difference between the two? Well, there's a there's a special uh, sim there's a special symbol dot key for method that will tell you if a symbol is global. Um, if it's global, it'll be added to this uh, symbol this global symbol registry, and if you use this method, it will return to you the string value inserted into the symbol when you created it. If the symbol is unique, it's going to return to you the data type undefined instead. But be careful when using this on symbols that don't have an optional string, because they're going to return the string undefined instead of the data type undefined, meaning they exist, but there was no string. So before ES6, only strings could be used as keys for objects. Now symbols can be used as keys as well. But you can't access them by the normal methods. You can't use object.keys, for in loops, or get own property names. You have to use get own property symbols instead. So this is one way for you to have a set of keys that are iterated through differently on objects. 
uh, so use cases for symbols. They're good when you need uh, a key that isn't a string, a unique value that isn't a string, or if you want to name constants. For example, in React, when we have constants, you can use a symbol instead, feed an optional string. And even if two people created two symbols of the same optional string, they won't be equal to each other. Um, these are some of the resources that I use. So if you want to learn more about UX6, you can look at some of these. Um, this was Maps, Sets, and Symbols by Sean Martin. Thank you. <laughs>